Reeves with the bat, he's sitting courtside, just dropped a career-high 35 points, receiving MVP chance while saving AD's legacy. Receiving high praise from Davis James and coach Darvin Ham, the Lakers' secret weapon in Austin, don't call him Powers Reeves, put on a show-stopping clinic by both working his way to the free throw line more than the entire Orlando Magic squad and also converting nine of his 14 field goals. Austin admitted post-game that he's been studying from the most masterful free throw merchants in today's game in James Harden and Trey Young, a facet to his well-rounded scoring repertoire which could really work to bail out the Lakers when they need it most to an even higher degree once they get fully healthy. Hate on him all you want, but this man Austin's journey to the association was as inspirational as they come. Stay tuned to see why there's still a ton of untapped potential with Reeves, how he resembled 2012 LeBron with his career night, plus what this purple and gold W actually means for the 17-time world champs. Right quick, you're shockingly only in the 7.2% if you're subscribed, so please subscribe, leave a thumbs up as it takes just a few seconds and makes a massive difference, and follow at DeepFlowHoops on Instagram and Twitter, I can't thank you enough for the support. We'll get to how all off the bench, Hillbilly Kobe's both team most and career best scoring performance came on 80% true shooting. With the Lakers season hanging on by a thread, this man was a game high plus 25, something we should be breaking down in a classic D-Flow film room breakdown. However, the haters were also very present after this showing. As you can see, it only takes one simple Twitter search to locate blatant hatred towards Reeves for getting to the line nearly 20 times. Fans love to both question the integrity of the game and take shots at the value of players by hating on the amount of fouls they draw. People are using Steph getting a lack of a whistle to argue that a random guy like Reeves shouldn't be getting this many calls. As I always mention, I don't think Steph gets the proper respect all the time. Curry is, however, at the same time, an anomaly in his own right. There's quite frankly no ignoring the fact that the very best scorers in the NBA are always the ones getting to the free throw line at the highest rate. It's by far the most underrated skill in the game of basketball, but the top 10 players in free throw attempts this year are Giannis, Embiid, Luka, SGA, Dame, Jimmy, Tatum, Trey, and DeRozan. While that does leave out players like LeBron, who's 17th, Jokic, who ranks 20th, and Steph, who ranks 34th, it's clear the league's top 10 foul drawers play the game a certain way. And that isn't a groundbreaking theory either. If we look at the top 10 players all time in free throws attempted, it's Carl and Moses Malone, Wilt, Shaq, LeBron, Kobe, Dwight Howard, Kareem, Oscar, and Jerry West. Some of those players use their brute strength, others like Kobe, Oscar, and Jerry were able to legally create contact, and some did a combination of both. Of course, that list of foul drawers leaves off Michael Jordan. Don't get it twisted, it's damn annoying when you're rooting against it, but we have to respect how the greatest foul drawers ever put the pressure on both their opponents and the officials. Now that's not to say Austin Reeves has come anywhere close to reaching that top-notch level of modern or all-time greats. Obviously, he's still a role player, developing as the games progress. That said, only trailing Butler, Embiid, Dame, Giannis, and Tatum, Reeves is number 6 across the NBA in free throws attempted this month. 77 damn foul shots is really impressive for a quote-unquote role player. Also noteworthy is the fact that this man's averaging 18 points and 5 assists per game over 10 outings in March. But speaking on his ability to draw contact, Reeves just told reporters, quote, I've watched James Harden and Trey Young and kind of try to put it into my own game, end quote. While it's not the most beloved method, if you can fool supposedly the world's best officiating crews and your opponents with foul baiting, it can be beneficial. Problem is, when the whistle tightens up over the course of a seven-game series down the line, that doesn't necessarily translate well to success in the playoffs. Thing is, though, Reeves is at most on any given night a third or fourth option for this Laker team. There's not a lot weighing on his shoulders like a LeBron or an AD or even a D'Angelo Russell. I broke down in the last video, heavily featuring Reeves and the Lakers from this channel, how he's extremely well-rounded in terms of his efficient three-level scoring. 
That's why the adjustment to the heavily increased aggressiveness in the playoffs and the refs not blowing their whistle as often in the postseason isn't going to affect Austin negatively. Reeves was a three-star high school recruit at the University of Oklahoma. He didn't average even 10 points per game until his junior season. As written by Kevin O'Connor, quote, I'm buying stock in Reeves because of his steady upward trajectory going back to college. He's a great example of why drafting older prospects doesn't always mean lower upside. They can often contribute earlier. Opportunity knocked for Reeves with LeBron James out, and he stepped up. Great take from O'Connor right there. Building off that, and a great point about Reeves is that you could make the argument that despite being really good right now, this man hasn't reached his ceiling quite yet based off the steady progression he made during his amateur career. At still just 24 years of age, albeit as an older sophomore, his 52% field goal percentage and 38% three-point percentage are both career highs by a significant amount. What's most insane about that is that 45.7% of his total volume of attempts are three-pointers, so they're not easy shots he's making by any stretch. In terms of his playmaking, if you're a Laker fan, even a fan rooting against him tuning in, you can see at face value that he's come a long way in terms of his decision making. You'd expect his assist numbers to go up naturally due to a minutes increase in year two, but his willingness to be a passer within the offense to mix up his scoring with those passes is generally evident. That ability to mix it up and not over dribble is what's become popular again in the game of basketball. While the older days of Joe Johnson, D. Wade, and Kobe featuring heavy creation off the bounce to carry their teams over the top was one era, now we're in the era with wings and two-way guards becoming dominant in the association, with teams scoring more than ever. It's the new wave ability to trust the pass and the flow, which is ramping up the scoreboards to a different stratosphere in the modern day era. Austin Reeves fits the mold of that selfless new age shot creator. He covers all areas in terms of what it entails to be a solid playmaker. He can create and pick and rolls really well. He's a great swing swing generator, and whether it's a lob pass or a kick out, he's always spot on with his timing and awareness. I'm going to go with a taller version of Fred Van Vliet considering they both went undrafted entering the association and have really similar games in terms of their ability to get downhill, find their teammates, but in your opinion, who's the most similar player comparison for Austin Reeves? Let me know down below in the comments. Commenter shoutout goes to IMBD Truth, who says, it's just hard to bet against Dallas. It was already hard to bet against Luka in the playoffs, but now Kyrie too. Even though the team is yet to play up to its potential when both Luka and Kyrie are playing, they haven't had many games together, and if they start really clicking as a team in the playoffs, then they could really do some damage. That said, Dallas's margin for error is also very thin due to some gaping holes on their roster, but on the other hand, I think they'll still be an extremely difficult team to eliminate, mostly because of Luka. Story is yours in Community Speaks, so leave your take.